are starting. Hey, okay. hello everyone. My name is Darren Fink. I'm with Transfiguring Adoption. Transfiguring Adoption is a nonprofit and we use media and resources to help you to connect with your foster or adoptive family. We also like to say that we nurture kids by giving a hoot about their caregivers. And I'm going to let my guests introduce themselves. Uh, whichever one of you wants to go first, I guess. All right. Um, my name is Kyle Ford. Um, my wife, Liz, and I are both with uh, City of Refuge organization, which is um, we provide artistic coping skills for um, those that we call broken and left out. So it includes foster families, um, but also those that are at risk to entering the system, um, kind of providing more wraparound services for for that. So. Okay. And Liz, did you want to say anything about yourself? Well, like you said, I'm Liz, and I am the... Um administrative assistant for City of Refuge. So. Very cool. Glad you guys are both here. Um, you guys haven't seen it at home. This seems seamless, but we've had a go around of trying to actually get you guys going live here. So it's good to be here. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that uh, we're going to be talking about coping using artistic skills today. And um, both Kyle and Liz both shine in that area. And that uh, with, with Transfiguring Adoption, a lot of you that go onto our website and use our resources like using our media resources and media reviews. Um, and so we're looking at other people, what other people have done and what they've created and how that's going to in turn help you. Uh, the neat thing about City of Refuge is they actually have a lot of things so that your, your kiddos can learn how to create and how to do things uh, to cope and how to make it through the trauma that they've been through. Um, but yeah, coping with artistic skills. So what, just real quick, like what are, people are thinking, everyone thinks art and everyone thinks, okay, drawing or doing a painting, but right. what are you guys talking about when you mean art? Well, I mean, it can be pretty much anything. We've done um, uh, music, uh, writing, uh, poetry, uh, storytelling. Um, there's a lot of different techniques that you can use. Um, um, some of this started with art therapy but it doesn't have to be with an, a therapist so much. Um, there, are, there are parts of it and then techniques that you can use um, even in, at home or even if you don't have, I mean, the, the beauty of it is that you don't have to be good at it right? in order for people to benefit from it. Um, art doesn't have a whole lot of rules. Um, it doesn't, it's not something that where you have to do a certain thing a certain way or else it's not good. Um, art is, is just a finding way to communicate in a way that even if they can't talk or they can't communicate it through words, they can, might be able to uh, draw a picture of what they're, how they're feeling or what they're experiencing or um, writing a song or just playing an instrument. Um, there's so many different aspects to it. Um, and we can go on more into yeah. that. But. So, uh, I guess, first of all, I just want to approach the issue. So what, when we're talking about coping with artistic skills, uh, obviously, because you're on Transfiguring Adoption, we're talking about foster and adoptive families. We're talking about foster and adoptive kiddos. Right. What are the issues? Um, a lot of you that are watching this uh, now or later on, which, by the way, I'll just interrupt myself. If you do have questions at any time during this, uh, if you're on Facebook, please uh, message them out, and we will try to answer them as soon as we can. And I will try to check on Google Live as much as I can uh, while we're talking to see if you have any questions. Uh, so please chat and ask us your questions. Um, we're having a little trouble on Google Hangout with the Q&A app right now. Um, but if you're on Facebook, please ask us your questions that you have about uh, for, for Liz and Kyle about uh, coping using artistic uh, skills or artistic uh, media. Um, what are the issues? What are the issues that children have that they're trying to overcome that we need to even look at this? Oh, where do we begin? Um, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're a foster kid, like just the sheer, like if the only thing that they've gone through is not being able to like be in their home, being taken from their home, that is trauma in itself. Um, so if that's the only thing that they've gone through, they have trauma and it's, you know, just by themselves. But then of course, you know, to be taken away from their family, they have so many other things that are on top of that, whether that's neglect or um, some kind of abuse, um, especially like once they get into their teen years, it then becomes like 
sometimes substance use, um, sometimes um, uh, death of family members. Um, there, there's such a wide variety of different things that they've gone through. Well, and you guys have put together uh, a packet. Um, it's, it's a really good read uh, for those of you that I, I know that there are a lot of people that are busy. Um, I know that there are a lot of you out there that are thinking, oh, one more thing to read. I've, I've got tons of paperwork to do. Um, th this is a, it's an easy to use packet um, that they've put together with some coping skills. Um, and what's the name of it? Um, and how can people find it? Well, one of our slogans is, I am broken. Um, we talk about the kind of brokenness that everybody experiences in some way and how um, we use it as a, as a tool of saying that just because you're broken doesn't mean that you're weak or worthless. Um, a lot of things that are broken can be used for such beautiful things and has still, have, still have such awesome use. Um, so we, we titled it I Am Broken. Um, and kind of talking about how um, points out some of the different, just briefly, some of the coping skills that can be used with the arts, just to get kind of a beginning, um, kind of spark some ideas. Um, because really, when it comes to artistic coping skills, there's not just kind of like one way of doing it. Um, it really depends on the personality of the child, what they and what they need. Um, so. Um, we kind of focus on five different areas um, in the packet. Um, with yeah. I, I really enjoy it because I a lot of people might know because they just they just follow us on transfiguring adoption, but but I, I was an art major, so I I, I yeah. had an unofficial major in painting, and so right away you had a section on painting, and that really caught my attention. Yeah. Um, and there was even, you even had some brain, a little bit of brain science, like kind of scratching the surface of why yeah. it was good for it, which again, if I'm going to have them tell how you can get to this packet at some point. Um, and again, if you have questions or you want to hear anything or have questions for them, let us know. But how, do, how does painting help a child cope with the trauma that they've gone through? Yeah. Um, well, one of the first things when, uh, my background is in, uh, youth ministry, but after that, I've um, my first job out of college was working at a wilderness school uh, with those that are. Uh, um, that's like the last step before the state takes over, um, and so one of the things that they really hounded on was um, was the brain chemistry and how to help them with their anger issues, um, and one of the things that they they taught us in the through our training is that um, in the brain, when when stress or anger or one of those kind of emotions is going through in the brain, the synapses in the brain are, are firing every which way. And it kind of eventually, you know, it, it tires the brain out until it kind of either shuts down or you're, they're not thinking clearly. Um, so having that repetitive nature or something to focus on uh, has, has makes it so the synapses in the brain fire in one direction instead of every every which way. Uh, so one of those things like the strokes of the of the painting, um, the focus that it needs, um, just that itself is one of the coping parts of the coping skill um, part of it. Um, so it's you know it's funny because it's like at the same time it's telling their story, it's having them express it in a way that they don't have to. Um, provide all the details they don't have they they control what they uh, what they express and what they don't express and sometimes it's hidden you know so not everybody is going to be able to know what they're expressing um, but they can express it but also at the same time it's helping their brain to kind of relax and calm um, at the same time. Now I know, I think I saw in the packet too, you said exercise and different things like that will do the same thing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, we, we have, I have had kiddos in my, placed in my home that they won't jog or go right. like, do anything like that, but they, they will color in a coloring book or do right. something like that. Is that yeah. why you would turn to this too? Like, is that, is that kind of one of the positives? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, growing up, I was never really that... 
um, much of a uh, I love Nintendo sports kind of fan. <laughs> I love Nintendo and to watch yeah, TV. Definitely. So I'm totally on board with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, it's funny because like I I remember not going to preschool because in my mind I remember <laughs> my parents giving me a choice of either going to preschool or staying home and watching TV. I chose watching TV, of course. So sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's great. Um, so, what what is your? I mean, what is one piece of media or one art form that that you you really see impactful, or one that just you really like that that you see to help kids or even help you? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, two that I used uh, when I was younger was poetry and uh, music. Um, in high school, it started with um, playing bass guitar, um, and I'm just kind of like having a band and just kind of like playing in somebody's garage, um, whatever that you know, whatever that is. Um, and poetry was a huge one, um, probably starting in middle school. Um, you know, cool. being kind of a, a dork and kind of, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you know, getting picked on and all that kind of stuff. It, you know, it really helped with me, and so um, those are the two that start. I started with, and with having working with kind of different people, um, I've had to kind of learn a lot of different ones. Um, hey, I'm gonna stop you, Jill. Uh, Jill is asking us, how do you guide kids to find coping skills that's going to work uh, for them? Is it just trial and error? Yeah, um, yep, yeah, I mean, part of it, I mean, obviously depending on their age, but like part of it is just kind of asking what do you want to do. Um, uh, another part of it, I think, is um, part of it is trial and error. Just try and see, because um, they won't know what helps them and what doesn't. Um, I've, I've worked in a lot of uh, residential facilities for teenagers um, in, the, in the foster care system. Um, and yeah, a lot of it's trial and error. Um, just kind of trying an activity with them. If they don't like it, then we'll try something else. Um, is there is there a way that you can kind of get in? Because I'm thinking, I know for myself, painting's expensive. Yeah. Like, what what do you do so that you can right. trial and error without saying, okay, we're taking out a second mortgage on our house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, like, I mean. With painting, you can start with something as simple as like pens or pencils. Um, charcoal is pretty simple to do. Right. Um, and with just a sheet of paper or um, coloring pages have been huge. You know, even if you can just start with just, all right, let's, you know, you want to color and then we can kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these you can kind of get creative. You don't have to be have the huge amount of art supplies to do that, you know. Um, uh, music gets tougher, obviously. Um, but, I mean, um, uh, yeah, um, I think part of it is, I think part of it is like that, you know, the, the old saying that takes a village. Right. Um, and so wherever you're at, I would hope that there'd be some kind of somebody that you could kind of connect with that might have that kind of some instruments or something. some instruments or art supplies or whatever it is that they can kind of well then I'm gonna piggyback behind. off of Jill also uh, not only with that but then so I I, I I love to sing I'm a bad singer how do I know though like how like I don't know I, I, it's been for ages since I've read piano and stuff like the red music like how do I how do I sh see if my kid's even interested in it or if it's helping them? Like, because I'm just picturing someone that knows nothing about art and they just slap a piece of paper in front of a kid and they're like, draw. Like, how do they right. know if it's helping them or not? Well, even with the music thing, it doesn't have to be instruments. It can just be finding an artist, you know, a musician that they like to listen to and just saying, you know, take some time, you know, maybe go on YouTube and find their, their music. Of course, it needs to be appropriate. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but I mean, I found with our little one that we had, there was one song 
that he just loved and it was the only thing that would calm him down so i mean if he was throwing a fit or whatever as soon as i would put that music video on it was like he would actually sit still and listen to the whole video nice so <laughs> it, it was it was enrique iglesias too which is funny Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Maggie is asking, would you recommend giving the child someone to look up to with their art and explaining their previous painters who have used their own personal problems to express themselves through art? Such as, oh, but cut your thing off. I don't know if I can see it. Such, uh, I think it says Van Gogh, like such as Van Gogh. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, def I mean, definitely. I mean, um, there is some research being done too with, um, I remember um, specifically Kara Powell, um, who has been writing books more about the church, but it can be used as anybody that's working with teen, with youth. Um, but she kind of looks at kind of like, most of the people look at kind of um, the ratio as being five to one. So five kids to one adult. She's like, what if we switched it to where it's five adults for every kid. Um, and the beauty of that is like, it doesn't have to necessarily even be somebody that's in their life, but it's kind of finding somebody that um, has done the same thing that they've done. Very um, nice. And being able to kind of been where they've been. Um, that's, I mean, that, that can be huge. Um, and there's a ton of stories out there with people, especially with the arts. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, I mean, if you can find somebody like, if you can find somebody that, um, somebody that has been there and has benefited from, from their art, like that's huge. What, uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say now, because when the door opened, I just, it threw everything out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, so what, what would you suggest parents that are interested in this, what would you suggest? What, what's the first step to sit down with? Because the, the other, I think the hard part is, is um, I think it's all happened accidental for me when I've had foster kiddos in my home is I just accidentally find, because like yeah. I said, we're a creative family. So we're just automatically doing right. stuff anyways. We're painting, we're drawing, we're singing, we're dancing. We're So the kid, yeah. we kind of just see them jump in with it. Mm -hmm. But like for a family that's not artistic, not creative, like what? Right what do they do to find out where, what's step one? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, part of it is, I think part of it that starts out is, is kind of listening to the kids. Um, I think they, they, in some ways they start out knowing some, some things that they like to do. Um, we've had a lot of kids that have been started out interested in singing or, um, you know, or start out with kind of like, um, how they like a certain artist or certain music or a certain whatever it is. And so just kind of going like, hey, would you like to do this too? Right. Um, and just kind of express like, we don't know where, where to begin with this, but let's start this journey with you. Um, I think it's so great too, because I think while we're thinking about this, the whole idea of the arts, it's just, it's an indirect way to, to talk with your child, it's an indirect way. Yeah, you're not you're not sitting them down and going, okay, sweetie, we, we need to talk about your issue with bedwetting. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Or we need yeah. to talk about, like, why are you scared of, like, it, it's, yeah. it's, you might see something in their song or in their music, and right. you're like, wow, that sounds really off. Like, is tell me about that. Yeah. Or, or, um, or why did you pick this? Or or why is this animal in <laughs> this painting? Or Should parents get discouraged if they don't see anything? Like if they just see their kid painting unicorns because they watch Despicable Me and they just want to paint fluffy stuff all the time? <laughs> uh, like, should they be discouraged? Like, this isn't working. I'm not getting anywhere with them. I don't think so because, like I said before, like, even if even if it doesn't go there, um, just the sheer fact of, of them focusing on one thing um, will help a lot. Um, and also just kind of like, like ask those questions. It's about like kind of asking those right questions. Um, so like, like, Hey, what is, what is, what is this? Why did you do, do it this way? What, you know, what do you, what do you see when you, when you 
you know, see this. Hmm. I, I see a top 10 question blog coming down the pikeway for City yeah. of Refuge, like <laughs> top yeah, 10 questions to ask your child. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and they don't have to be discouraged if it doesn't go there right away. I mean, no. obviously, if it's a new placement, it's going to take some time for the kid to open up and feel comfortable expressing those deeper right. things. So just letting them do what's ever in their head first and just let them, you know, express themselves that way. And then they, they can open up the door for more questions and, and allowing the kid to become more comfortable with you. Well, and I like that too, what you guys were talking about also is that it's, even if it doesn't go there, it's a life skill. You're basically teaching them a life skill of how to, how to pay attention to one thing at one time. I mean, that's a coping skill we all have to have as adults. Yeah. That, that some of us have it more than others, and some days I have it more than others, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. So I think that's great, too, to remember that if nothing else, you're helping with life skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm trying to see Kristen. Nope, I thought someone messaged in there. They didn't. Hi, Kristen. Kristen joined, though. I'll say hi to her. <laughs> um, okay. Well, tell us what what is City of Refuge doing to help with the like get these coping skills out there or i know you, you talk a lot about it takes a village um yeah. and like i like we were talking before i have no clue like anything instrumental it's it's been for it's been since third grade and i'm 39 right so like what what does what city of refuge do and how are they making an impact yeah um well right now we, we're, we're focusing on doing workshops with um uh, some of our workshops are with the um, teenagers, whether that be foster teens or whatever, um, to kind of create a space for them to express themselves in different ways um, and learning those kind of coping skills. Um, because I know that, like, me growing up, I had a lot of those friends that had garages and, um, you know, basements that we could play in or whatever it is, but for a foster kid a lot of times like especially if if you're if you're an older foster parent that has a teenager sometimes that can be really difficult when it comes to that stuff too um, and so our hope is to kind of create a space for those people um, and I want to encourage you if you're not in the I mean if you're not in the Knoxville area um, I mean uh, even if all you can do is open up a garage for somebody to play in um, that could be huge for them um, if you have somebody in your life that like hey like hey I'm not musical but I can help you have a space for you to play um, that could be huge or to paint or whatever whatever that is um, and but we're we're starting with workshops um, we're working on creating a space that we can do concerts and art shows and an after school program that is focused on those that are um, um, enjoy the arts more than they do sports or that kind of end of it, which most of the, art, the after school programs are, but also structured in a way that helps with um, anger issues and um, behavioral issues. Um, so we don't have to call the parent anytime that. Um, no, so and that's so huge. acts out. Yeah. No, if you um. are, and, and if, and I, I'm encouraging these guys to start rolling this out across the nation. But um, uh, no, that was one thing that when I when I spoke with Liz and, and Kyle, uh, one thing that um, attracts me to the idea, I think, the city of refuge is that everyone's trained. So uh, me as a caregiver, when I'm dropping them off and leaving my child with you, I'm not going home and worried that I'm gonna get a phone call about what they did because I think that that just sends yeah. the caregiver, and you guys have been there, you guys, oh, yeah. they, they've <laughs> yes. been in the trenches. This is why we're doing this. <laughs> We've had kids, we had daycare. So, so <laughs> it's not like, but you're not listening to two folks either that, that just are trying to help and they have no clue. Like they really, um, cause I think that was some of the most depressing times of my life was going to pick my, oh. my preschooler up every day yeah. and just hearing about all the awful things. And, um, mm -hmm. and I just was like, is nothing going right? And because nothing, things were going on at home too. So it was like, no, it's just right. all horrible. Um, and even yeah. people that are helping aren't helping. Um, so I, that's one thing that really, uh, they have people that are going to help. They have issues that are like, they have 
we have stuff that's going to work. Yeah, and the beauty <laughs> of it too is we have already a therapist who is on board who wants to be part of this after school program that we're creating. So we'll always have someone there who is very experienced in knowing how to deal with whatever behavioral issues come up. Very good. And then, yes. the, then the caregiver doesn't have to um, transport their, uh, their, their kid to the therapy. Or... Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> so, the, so doctor visits would be the only thing that... <laughs> what, uh, uh -huh. what, so if, if someone's watching and they're a caregiver and they want to get they want to get more information on either the packet that we were talking about because there's a lot of good information and I'll tell you right now we only skim the surface really um, but we're not going to take up all your time if you're watching us on YouTube later or whatever we don't want this to be like you got other shows you probably want to watch so we're going <laughs> to let you get to them but we we're glad you're here but what what do they do to to get this packet what do they do to get more information on City of Refuge yeah um, right now. Um the, the packet is available if you sign up for our, um, our newsletter um, at uh, cityofrefugenox.org. Um, but um, I want to, maybe we can find a way to attach it, link, link it through um, yeah, that'd be great. adoption or something. I think what um, I might do is I might actually, if you guys are watching, I know a lot of people check out our monthly newsletter and, and go to our new blogs. We might actually do a blog, and maybe we'll link it to the blog so that you can get it and ask more questions. Um, what if someone is watching and they don't want to foster? They don't want to like they, they they're okay with the idea of kids mm -hmm. and they want to support kids, but they don't want one in their house. Yes. What do they do to get on board with City of Refuge? Um, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's. I mean, um, I mean. You know, we're like I said, we're kind of more of the wraparound services, so kind of helping helping foster families. Um, so um, if you want to get involved in, um, especially, I mean, we always need artists and musicians, those that know that kind of end of it, because um, obviously, like, not everyone knows every kind of art. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yes, I definitely don't. Um, some of them, we know some of those super people that know everything about art but um but yeah um um we have um mentorship opportunities um um we love the idea of kind of the five adults to every kid kind of an idea so um um the more we can pour into those kind of families um we know what a, what it's like to be a foster family and kind of um when we came when we came from Michigan about mm -hmm. five years ago. And so when we came down and we started fostering, we don't have family, we don't have anything. Um, so we had to find those people to kind of latch on to, whether that be a church community or friends or whatever that was. And so um, I think the first thing to do, like, I mean, if you want to get involved with Ch City of Refuge, definitely check out our website um, and we'll have, you know, there's definitely ways of, and our Facebook group and, all that to connect um, with us, and we'll, we can let you. We can have a conversation, um, let you know how you can get involved. But um, if you not, even if you're not in the Knoxville area, I want to encourage you. Just if you know foster families or no kids in your in your life, um, ask those parents what do you need. Um, kind of is there something that I can do to help you? Mm -hmm. um, because often. A lot of foster families don't feel like they can ask. Mm. Um, That's true. It just feels like they sh they should be able to do it on their own. Like they should have those skills. And mm. so, you know, um, just opening those quite that question and be like, "How can I help you?" Like, like, and just don't, don't take no for an answer because yeah, sometimes they'll be like, "No, we're good." Um, but you know, just kind of like, well, no, you're, it, it but, can but, be. It can be as simple as, you know, say you get a new placement, taking a meal to the family, oh, or, um, you know, if you have clothes or anything that you want to donate, or, you know, they always need donations, they always need things for these families. So even that in itself, if you don't want to get involved with the, the kid side of it, there are so many other ways. That you can help. No, and what you guys are saying too, like uh, we just, our, our volunteer group just did a, a paper plate and yep. a paper cup drive. And yeah, definitely. We, we found out that so many, so many caregivers were into that, 
but they were into it because people weren't taking no for an answer and they were saying, yes, you're going to use these. Right. Because we had so many people, we had yeah. so many caregivers actually tell us, I, I, I want to be responsible. I want to be responsible for the environment. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't, I should be teaching kids cooking skills. I should be. Right. But then when some people said, no, here, use these. It'll just take some stress off for a little while. Right. They were like, oh, okay. Yeah, I should do this. Cause it's short -term. Um, yeah, it was short term and, and they, they took it. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we found, I found is if, if you just, Val validate people I guess just if a foster parent comes up to you and just set, uh, unloads on you just to listen and not yeah. tell them they're crazy or dismiss oh, yes. it as as uh, oh well that's just what kids do or that's just uh, yeah. don't, don't be dismissive <laughs> of it even if you can yeah. just just say mm -hmm. just be there for them and realize they're going yeah. it, even if it's not real to you it's real to them um, um and like I said if you, if you have a basement or a, a yes. garage to use like that's huge too just whatever they, you know, you know, ask those great questions, you know, ask those questions, like, what do you need? Um, kind of like, especially if they're working on their art, artistic coping skills, um, you know, finding those ways to get the art supplies or whatever that is. Um, um, I feel like the need for a little bit of a plug, though, too. We are... Um, <laughs> yeah, go for it. We are working on creating a space in the South, South Knoxville area, like we said. Um, and so we're work, starting the process of getting the funds. And so if you want to help us with that, um, there's more details on our website. Um, yeah, so. for sure. And our Facebook page as well, there is a link. Um, Can they just search me. City of Refuge on the Facebook page to find that? Um, yes, it's. I believe it's City of Refuge Knox. Okay. Um, so yeah, and I wanted to say, I can't see because there's a glare on my phone out in the sun, but I think it's Violetta is saying she's loving what we're talking about. And I can't see your name, but said that you are sharing this video, that you love it. Thank you so awesome. much, you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Um, be sure to check out City of Refuge on, on the website. Is it .org, right? Yes. .org. And also check out City of Refuge Knox on their Facebook page. Uh, definitely get involved with this group. Um, be pushing them and see what you can do to get it to roll out in the nation um, so that we can get uh, more of these services offered throughout. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Anything, if, if you had all the caregivers, all the foster parents' attention right now, what is the one short thought that you would want them to know right now? Um, one short thought is to don't be afraid to experiment. Um, uh, they're not going to know what coping skills they have, like they have right away. Um, it's going to take some trial and error. So just be willing to go there with them, but also just ask, ask and listen. It takes a lot of active listening, um, to be able to know and listen to what they're saying, um, and what they want from you. Is there anything, one short thought you would tell a foster parent or adoptive parent if they were to, everyone in the world was listening to you right now? Um, I would just say that I know sometimes fostering can be really lonely. And just to know that you're not alone and that we're here for you, you know, whatever you need. Um, we just want to be, be there to help you through these tough times because, like we said, I mean, We've had foster kids as young as two. We've had them up to 18. So we've had a little bit of everything. And we just, we know. We know what it's like. And, you know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you guys so much for watching with us this last 30 minutes or so. Um, definitely check out cityofrefuge.org. Also check out our media reviews that we have on Transfiguring Adoption. We uh, just actually reviewed the new Netflix uh, series, the first episode, Anne with an E. So if you are into Anne of Green Gables and you want to see the new rendition, we have some words of warning and caution for, for you, for your foster family on that review. Um, but other than that, we got great video uh, reviews, uh, book reviews, and all sorts of tools on the website. Um, go check it out at transfiguringadoption.com, and we hope we're helping to nurture and grow your foster or adoptive family. Thank you, and I'm going to try. There we go.